Hi guys, it's Lisa and welcome to this episode of The Cody Cast. Um, I'm actually very excited for today's guest because she, uh, I've been working with her for, I think this is our 10th year together. She's employee number one, and I'm pretty sure she was sick of me probably nine and a half years ago, <laughs> but she's um, generously hung around to look after me and make sure I don't make a complete mess of myself. But welcome to the show, Paige. Mm. <laughs> Woohoo. Thanks, LT. So today we're actually talking about the rising trend of social commerce. So looking forward to this one. Yeah, I mean, we're both notorious shoppers. We don't yep. need anything to be made easier for us to spend money. <laughs> but uh, outside of just that it's good for us personally, it's really interesting for marketing in general of how we can make uh, any kind of consumer journey someone's going to take shorter, how we can make it more interesting, how we can help brands make that, you know, at the forefront of their, of their plan. It's actually interesting because I know that we both love shopping and love shopping online. I actually generally use social to find things to buy. Oh, absolutely. I, I <laughs> now only follow accounts so it bookmarks what I want to buy. Oh, yeah. How bad is that? I mean, what did we do before social? I can't even remember. Did I just not have money? Yeah, I, I was thinking <laughs> <laughs> it, I was thinking about that the other day of like, oh. Huh. I've got a few packages coming and this never used to be the case. And now I just think that, yeah, it, it got easier that you can yes. buy things so so quickly and mm. without um, any kind of step in the process to be like, oh, I don't really need this. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it's, <laughs> it becomes a problem. But uh, I think for, for brands particularly that – the biggest value that you can give to your audience or your consumers is making their lives easier. So if you have a product that is desirable, but if your like web, um, uh, your web checkout has seven steps instead of three, then you're not actually helping them. They like the product, they want the product, but they don't want the hassle of having to re-enter information or if they can't, um, create an account so they can't just log in and have anything autofilled. Um, so anything that kind of pushes, uh, I suppose, puts the, the burden on the consumer to make the purchase is difficult. Yes. Um, so TikTok are launching an integration with Shopify, which is going to really change the way that you can see a product online and not have to leave the platform in order to purchase it. As if I didn't need more reasons to go on TikTok. <laughs> like, actually, speaking of TikTok, it's quite interesting because I noticed that almost, and I don't know if this is correct, but I think every fifth TikTok is an ad. Yeah. Which is crazy because I don't feel like I notice it as much as on Instagram. And I'm not sure if that's because the content for ads is significantly better on TikTok. It tends to be a bit more organic. Yeah. I Look, I think it's to, to kind of swerve into to content strategy here. I think it's a bit of a column A, column B answer that A, advertisers on TikTok are much more aware that the content that people like to consume on that platform is user generated. It isn't high, like high production value. It is just made on people's phones. So they've adjusted their content to match that. Uh, so it does fit more seamlessly. But also I find with TikTok, like you've really got to search the interface to see if it's sponsored, whereas Instagram kind of blare it. Mm. Um, that this is a sponsored post or you're seeing this because it's an ad mm -hmm. um, and TikTok are a little bit more like conservative, I suppose, with that messaging. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if in future, I suppose, that they might have to change that mm. to be a bit more explicit um, because, yeah, before with Instagram, back in the days of like if you could just boost a post and get a, a ton of attention from that, it did feel a bit more integrated and now it's very clearly this is an ad. We want you to see this ad. Please click this ad. Um, but I don't know whether it's like for TikTok especially, if you don't like a, a video that you've been served, you just swipe up and it's done. Whereas Instagram, it's 
a little bit more intrusive, I suppose, like for story ads that you have to physically kind of mm. no, that's a good get point. rid of it. Yeah, I didn't think of that actually. Yeah, I do sometimes get annoyed. I'm like, I don't, I didn't ask for this ad and now I've got to click through just so I can see the content that I actually do want to see. Mm. So that's a very good point. I didn't think of that for story ads. I did notice for TikTok ads, they don't have the CTA until a couple of seconds in. Yeah. It just kind of then appears or slides up. So you don't automatically realize sometimes that it is an ad, which I think is good. Yeah. Well, I I think it's good for viewers because then it does feel like a really integrated experience, Mm. but uh, or a really curated experience. But I, I, yeah, I really do wonder if there'll be a crackdown on, on whether that will have to change Mm. rather than like, tricking people it's an ad yes or they can be clever like there's been a few uh like youtube ad campaigns that play into the fact that you have to wait to skip the ad so Mm. they try and give you something really entertaining up front that's good um so that way that can work quite well as well you feel engaged yeah Mm. yeah and it feels like you know the people that are advertising to you actually care if they're entertaining you as well that and then in our long tangent about advertising on platforms, it kind of comes back to it that it is putting that consumer uh, experience front and centre, whether it's through advertising or whether it's through an active promotion or a push to make a, make a sale or to, for, for them to consider a spend decision and a subscription or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, if you don't centre your consumer's experience as, you know, your main goal here, you're kind of being a little hostile to them Mm. to be like, I don't care if you're enjoying this. I don't care about the content I'm serving you. I don't care of how you got here. Just give me some money. Mm. And especially for the people that are on these platforms, they typically are either your Gen Zs, millennials, upper millennials, some Gen uh, Gen Xs um, that everyone tends to forget. I would say that that, that's actually an interesting point because I feel like sometimes we look at, brands on social and we look at their organic strategy and it's very salesy Mm. and I personally as a consumer shy away from that like I want to know what you're selling me but I don't want to feel like you're selling it to me if that makes sense yeah exactly because like it it, at the end of the day like it if you're selling something then obviously you're going to give them a product or service Mm. for money yes like basic basic um economics whatever I'm that's not my <laughs> my area of expertise it's a fancy business term. yeah oh, yeah I don't have an MBA it's it's none of that that's that uh, that's in my wheelhouse but now because especially for younger generations and the people that are on these platforms that if you're not giving them a reason for why your brand because like we've more or less grown up with the internet or Mm. or were quite young when the internet came in. Like we've got everything everywhere all at once. We Mm. don't need your thing Mm. Mm. because you can go on eBay or Amazon or wherever, whatever, and get like anything that you can think of Mm -hmm. that it exists. So we don't need you, We but we do need you to tell us why your product is the one. Mm. Um. So I was talking about, again, because I'm a chronic shopper and I buy, I'm very easily persuaded to buy things. Um, On Instagram, I was served an ad for a uh, workout bench that it's kind of like an all-in-one, you can stand it up, sit it down. Did you buy that? Yeah, of course I did. (laughs) (laughs) But um, it's a brand called Spore Athletica and they have done this so smartly in the way that they've designed their social media strategy in in such a way to be really value adding so the product itself is designed really beautifully and it's um uh a whole part of it i suppose is really the the aesthetics of it that it's really a, a beautiful piece that you don't mind sitting in your spare room so you can work out um but on their website that they push through from your uh, from their socials they offer workout videos that you don't need a subscription for. So if you buy into the product, they give you like these, I, th- I think they add to them every couple of months or whatever. Um, they add to these these videos that you don't need to sign up for, you don't need to do anything for. There's no exchange 
uh, it's just an offer for you. And then they've built that value out into their social strategy. So when you're getting served these ads and you're getting pulled over, not only can you a, immediately see the aesthetic value of it, and they've got quite high brand equity from that, um, but for, for it to be not just give us some money and we'll send you this bench, for it to be give us some money, we'll send you this bench and we'll teach you how to use it. Um, and you can shop through Instagram and we'll send it to you. And it came really quickly. No, not sponsored. Um, but, <laughs> but you can sponsor her if you want. But you could. <laughs> um, but um, that, kind of, that kind of strategy and that kind of, you know, pulling everything that we've been talking about today together is a, is a prime example of it because you have high vol- uh, a high value product with high quality content that's pushed in a really smart way that cuts out every step of resistance from a consumer to be mm. like, oh, it's too expensive or it's too difficult to mm. buy or shipping's going to take forever or uh, once they have it, what do I do with it? Mm. Um, they, through their, their marketing, they answer every single question. So mm. when you get served that ad, it's just a no-brainer to be like, yeah, here's my money. Make me look like Giselle. <laughs> It's actually interesting because I do feel like once upon a time we were shopping on websites. I can't even actually think about how I found things to buy prior to social media. But yeah. but now exactly like what you were saying, like you will engage with the brand's content first and foremost generally, then you'll follow them and then they just start ticking off touch points for conversion by just serving you amazing content. Mm. So then, and because of the way all the social algorithms work, you just start to see content that you engage with. So you're more likely to then, like you said, see that you've consumed all this other useful content from them, like really that value-based selling, and then you, you press that buy button. And it's weird to feel almost like that it's so easy to just buy through social. I feel like once upon a time it was very clunky or I didn't know if I could trust oh, it. Yeah, like if you'd clicked through someone's uh, website link in their bio but their website wasn't mobile optimised yes. and then you don't know if you're in Safari, if you're still in, well, I say Safari because I have an iPhone, but <laughs> your browser. Um, uh, and then you don't know if you're still on platform or if you go to like, I don't know, get your credit card to make the purchase, but then you go to open the app again and then it's gone because it timed out. Then it was really uh, a clunky process and not one that I particularly would like to return to. I agree. I mean, it's probably better for our wallets, but yeah. um, our credit card, but not good for, you know, us as individuals who are shopaholics. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose another point here, but also uh, a tangent because I'm known for them, <laughs> that I've tried to be a lot better in my consumption of things now because I am, um, well, A, I live in an apartment so that I have finite room for things. Um, but B, I, um, I'm trying to really kind of vote with my wallet about yeah. where where I'm putting my money and what I'm putting my time to. Um Another way that this kind of Instagram shop or Facebook shopping or whatever, whatever, uh, or, or TikTok and uh, Shopify uh, coming together is brands can really communicate that message really clearly to consumers to be like, this is who we are, what we do. So there's not a disconnect between them coming across their product and for them to um, yeah, make a spend decision on that. So that, that's another interesting point for brands. Yeah, fantastic. And I, I like the concept of being able to vote with your wallet. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like that's a great technical term to say just shop a lot. <laughs> yeah, and but shop for brands that have good morals and ethics and yes. as far as you can do in a capitalist society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a topic for another day. Yeah. <laughs> Before I get in my soapbox. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge page. I learned so much from you and I really, uh, you know, I have so much respect for what you do. And, Aww. you know, one of the things I love most about you is you know so much in detail about so many different topics, which is actually very hard to do in the world of digital, which is moving so quickly. So. Just all content all day. Yeah. <laughs> makes me very at, at least sure, makes me happy but also makes me at least knowledgeable uh, knowledgeable enough to carry a 20 minute conversation oh yeah excellent well thank you so much for stopping by if you have any uh questions for us feel free to send them in if you want to work with us feel free to get in touch we've got all of the details 
in the show notes and you can give us a follow or subscribe or like if you've liked what you've heard today check out our socials they are on point as they should be since we are a social media or digital marketing agency but thank you so much for stopping by Paige. thanks thank you bye